If you're anything like me, you like to sleep. Now, unfortunately, between family, work, and my TikTok obsession, I don't get nearly enough good Z's anymore. And this is why when I lay my head down to sleep on my huge pillow, Heat! I prefer to not get blasted out of bed come sunup. <laughs> Which begs the question that I will try and answer today. Because I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes, and here are the 10 worst morning alarm clock theme songs by WWE. Brie Bella's Total Divas character was that of someone who became extremely obnoxious after having one too many kamikazes, which was then turned into the hashtag <laughs> Now this entrance theme would probably make for a decent club hit, but there ain't no way it should ever be used to wake you up before you go-go. Instead, we just want to say no-no to the awfully abhorrent auto-tune track, which is just so jarring and unmusical that fans were totally put off by it. Much like when WWE attempted to make Brie Mode a thing, like hulking up or something. <laughs> Having a Native American war cry wake you up in the morning isn't exactly the way to go in my humble opinion. Sure, it'll do the trick, but at first you might feel like you're under attack. Now if you've been a fan of wrestling for the past few decades, then you recognize that this theme song belongs to none other than Tatanka. A native of North Carolina's Lumbee tribe, Tatanka was a popular upper mid-card workhorse for the Fed who rose to prominence in the early 1990s, bolstered by an undefeated winning streak that lasted nearly two years. Now, no offense meant toward his heritage, but hearing a screaming warrior at the butt crack of dawn would be just as traumatic as getting an unwanted buzz cut. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change! God bless Owen Hart, but I swear to God, having the rocket screaming bloody murder at you first thing in the morning might be the worst thing since High Energy's ridiculous wardrobe of checkered suspenders and fluorescent baggy pants. I mean, if you're looking to ramp up your anxiety and get your blood pumping by all means, go ahead. But this tune isn't for this guy. Nope. Enough is Enough and It's Time for a Change is an edgy, industrial sounding theme that fit his Blackheart character to a T after the Montreal screw job. One of the most influential wrestlers to ever lace a pair of boots, if there was anyone who had repeatedly shown the in-ring ability and promo skills necessary to be a top star in the business, it was the King of Hearts, who is still sorely missed today. Speaking of the Hitman, I've always loved his theme music, even all the way back in the day when he was in the original Heart Foundation and tag teaming with Jim the Anvil Nightheart. <laughs> The Pink and Black Attack had one of the finest fusions of hard rock, as their straightforward, business-like entrance tune was a fast-paced, exciting, and energetic choice. And this banger somehow became even better when it was remixed by Jim Johnston into Heart Attack for Brett's solo WWE run. However, I'm not a proponent of being jolted out of bed by a loud, squealing guitar screech that quite possibly could make me poop my pants. And I'm sure that Brett would agree if that were to actually happen, it would obviously be Goldberg's fault. While Dusty Rhodes may have been the son of a plumber, the American Dream couldn't touch T.L. Hopper, the World Wrestling Federation's favorite handyman in the mid-1990s. Along with his trusty plunger, Bessie, Hopper was no ordinary plumber. He was the worst kind fans were likely ever to see. And to reflect his character, or lack thereof, the company decided to use potty humor by flooding arena speakers during his entrance theme with an ominous low hum, and layered over top of that was the repeated sound of, you guessed it, flushing toilets. Exactly who this was supposed to appeal to beats me. What's that smell? But this bowel-moving music certainly wouldn't sit well with you when you're trying to get up and at him. The most iconic opening sound effect in professional wrestling history, second only, of course, to The Undertaker's dong, 
is that sound of glass shattering, which means, oh hell yeah, someone's ass is about to get kicked by the Texas rattlesnake. I Won't Do What You Tell Me is one of legendary composer Jim Johnston's greatest gifts to the WWE universe, but it's not a theme that I'd be psyched out of my mind to hear when I'm sound asleep dreaming of puppy dogs and ice cream. However, using it for your AM alarm clock is a straight up hell to the no no. Speaking of asses, but not specific to or excluding Fairness! Scott Steiner excelled in pro wrestling for over three decades, first alongside his brother Rick as the innovative Steiner Brothers tag team, and then as a roided up, loud mouthed ladies man who reinvented himself as Big Papa Pump. Also known as Freakzilla, Scott was infamous for backstage fights, drug test refusals, and rambling unpredictable promos because he basically had zero Fs to give. With a lot of anger and resentment built up over the years, you'd be best to avoid using his holler if you hear me WWE theme for the simple fact that its blaring sirens don't make for a slow and gradual awakening. <laughs> So back before I became a content creator, I spent some time in the corporate world and not to brag or anything, but I used to dress pretty dapperly. Some might say that I was even the second coming of Seth freaking Rollins. However, truthfully, I couldn't hold a freaking candle to the drip god. Now Rollins has been absolutely slaying it these days and has also achieved almost every accolade imaginable over his main roster WWE career. But this former theme of the architect ain't that great a choice for your morning music because hearing someone scream won't have you all set to pick out your snazziest suit. Rather, you'll stop, drop, and roll your way to the wrong side of the bed. Even in a fantasy world full of animals, beasts, and giants, Braun Strowman is a monster among men. An imposing grizzly bear standing 6 foot 8 and close to 400 pounds, Strowman is like stupidly strong. And his former theme, while all fine and good, it's that opening roar that's the real recipe for disaster here. On a positive note, dare I say it's the present day version of Stone Cold's glass shattering. Okay, brah. It's the kind of entrance tune that will pop the crowd massively. Which is why the WWE Universe raged on the internet after the company changed it upon his return in 2022. Nonetheless, it's definitely for the best to not set up this song as you hit the sack because you just might wake up a sleeping giant. Censorship is the most obnoxious entrance theme of all time. Yep. Sounding like a cross between an annoying car alarm and something you'd probably hear in a fallout shelter. That's like an alarm clock. Woo -woo! Talk about waking up on the wrong side of the bed. However, this was a great fit for the right to censor put together as a parody of the parent television council who were protesting WWE programming's level of violence and questionable content, this faction featured formerly risque characters who had ultimately seen the light I have exercised the demons and changed their inappropriate ways. Played at an eardrum busting volume, this theme made everyone hate the RTC and for that it did its job. But even though a funky bass line and some drums were added to the track, it was still pretty gosh darn painful. 